Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our third monthly webinar here. Today we're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about free and inexpensive assistive technology tools. I've got my desktop pulled up, so I can't see if there's any questions right now. But if you do have questions, feel free to type them into the chat box. Jenny's sitting right across from me here, and she will let me know uh, when to take a look at those. But we're going to try and cover a whole range of free tools that are out there that could be used in the classroom. And really, we've gotten to the point where the free stuff has gotten much better than it used to be in the past. Um, it, one of the issues we used to have with uh, even the free stuff that was built into Windows, it's just it wasn't very reliable. It's gotten much better. It's gotten to the point now where there's some built-in things with lots of different tools that, that may be just as good as some of the things you would purchase. So we're going to dive right in and we're going to take a look at um, some of the uh, free tools that would be available uh, assistive technology-wise on the computer. The first thing I want to show you <coughs> excuse me, is a uh, is uh, some built-in things to Microsoft Windows. I haven't played with the Windows 8 stuff yet. We're still using Windows 7. But if you hit the Start button and you go into this little uh, search box down here and you type in Ease of Access, you're going to get access to the Ease of Access Center. We open that up. You're going to see there's a few things in here. I guess before I do that, I do want to point out, I'm not going to show you this today, but if you type in Speech, up at the top, there is a built-in Windows speech recognition that can be used to dictate text into the computer. It's okay. I, I mean, if you, if you don't have anything, it's, it's better than nothing. I, I would still recommend dragging over it to most people, but it's a good thing to try to kind of see how speech recognition is going to work for you. Anyway, let me show you a couple things in the uh, Ease of Access Center. The first thing I want to show you is the magnifier. So you have some of the visual impairment. Uh, you can start up this ma screen magnifier. And what the screen magnifier does is you can see it pops up into the top of the screen here. And it uh, allows you to magnify wherever your cursor moves to a certain level. So right now it's set at 2 times magnification. I believe we can go all the way up to 16 times magnification. Um, one of the downsides is we start to see it does start to get a little bit blurry. It starts to get a little pixelated. Even at 2 times magnification, it, it can be a little bit pixelated there. Um, that's a downside to it. But I, I mean, it is nice that um, we can magnify things and, and, and kind of see them at a level that might be helpful to us. One of the newer things here is it has this views option. And I'm not sure why it's not letting me do full screen or lens on this computer. But there is a full screen option. The full screen lets us basically magnify the entire screen and see that entire piece magnified. The lens piece allows us to uh, have basically a virtual magnifying glass. Our cursor is always in the middle of this lens, and it, um, it, it, wherever you move it, it magnifies what's beneath it. Those are new. Those are real helpful, giving, giving you a few different options on here. If we look at the settings wheel here, this little gear option, you can see one of the other things here is there's a color inversion. If we flip color inversion on, we're going to see that up in that magnified area, it's going to increase or it's going to change the color to whatever the opposite side of the color wheel is. So black will become white, orange becomes blue, blue becomes orange, so on and so forth. For some folks that have uh, visual impairments, it can help make things stand out a little bit better that way. Um, so this is, I mean, the, I guess the downside to this is it, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of customizability. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Um, but it, it is a nice tool, especially if, you, uh, if you're on the road somewhere and you don't have access to your standard computer and you want to access a public computer, is knowing that that's there, that you can get uh, some magnification is, is very helpful. Another free tool that they have that's come a long way as well is the, uh, the on-screen keyboard. So if you've got somebody with a, with a physical disability that can't access a standard keyboard, there is an on-screen keyboard built into Windows. With this on-screen keyboard, all we do is we start, we point to a letter, click on it, and it types what we've clicked in the screen. They now have, and I think they've had this for a couple versions now, they now have a word prediction bar in here as well to help you increase your typing speed. So the more you type, the, or the closer you get to a word, the more likely it's going to be to be up here. You can click on it and add it in your document and you've got that uh, in there as well. 
So that's that's a, a very helpful component. The other thing that they do with this that not many folks are aware of is if you go down to options here, there are multiple ways to allow people to click on these keys. So if you have somebody with a physical disability that struggled with accessing a standard mouse click, you can over, go over here and, ch and check this hover over keys. And then you can select a duration that they have to hold still to select it. We'll use it one second and hit OK. And what happens now is when we hold still on a letter, you're going to see it's going to automatically click that after one second. You can kind of see that there's like a um, fanning out, kind of fading out uh, visual to, to kind of show you how long you have to hold still on that button for it to click. It, it's really helpful in that respect that we do have access to that hover and hold still if we can't click a mouse. Downsides to this, it only works within that keyboard. So it's not a true left click. It just works in that keyboard. Also, if, as you're seeing, I'm sitting still on that E right now. If I wanted to hit the E again, I'd have to move off of it and move back. Even if I'm on a key, if I jitter even a little bit, it's going to reset. So I have to move off the key and back on to type that as well. Um, one other option that they have here if we go in is a scan through keys. So this really allows us to give access to anybody that might have issues with accessing a computer as long as they can control one part of their body. If they can control one part of their body, maybe just maybe a hand, a head, a chin, we can set up a switch near that part of their body. We can then choose scan through the keys and choose a scanning time. I'm going to leave this as a keyboard. I'm going to leave this as my space bar as my selection key right now. And what we would do is we'd take, we'd get a little USB switch interface and the space bar option in it. All of them do. We'd plug our, our uh, switch into that. And now when, whenever we'd hit our button, what it's going to do is it's going to scan through our keyboard. When it gets to the row we want, we click the row. When it gets to the part we want, we click that part. And if we make a mistake, we've got to wait for it to go all the way through. It goes all the way through twice, and then it circles back to the beginning. But basically, as you can see, what this allows us to do is it allows us to scan through and select certain words just by being able to hit one button, or certain letters just by being able to hit one button. So although this is not an ideal way to type, if you don't have access to doing this any other way, this is, probably, this is a fantastic option for you. So it can be slow. But as you can see, Microsoft has these tools built in to allow just about any to anybody to be able to type and use, um, use this on-screen keyboard. I'm going to close that Microsoft stuff down for a second here. Um, and I want to show you, so we, we were using that on-screen keyboard. I want to show you a way that uh, why somebody might use that on-screen keyboard, and and if they use a maybe they maybe they have to use uh, maybe they can't use a standard mouse, maybe they'd have to use something like a head-controlled mouse. Now, for a long time, a head-controlled mouse was real expensive. It still is. A commercial head-controlled mouse runs like eight hundred dollars, and and we're um, a lot of folks can't afford that. There is a tool out there that that is free though that uh, that does pretty much the same thing. It's called the camera mouse. This is camera mouse right here. You can get this off a website. It's uh, www.cameramouse.org. So what happens with the camera mouse? And I'm not sure. Maybe this isn't going to work because I'm using the camera for something else as well. So I'm going to take just one second and I'm going to shut off my my camera to see if I can pull up the camera mouse. So you're not going to be able to see me for one second here. There we go. Okay. So the way the camera mouse works is it uses a wet, so you have to have a webcam. Most laptops, a lot of computers now have webcams built in. What this is going to do is you would take your cursor, you'd find a point on your face that you want to use as your control, and you would click. It's going to take a second to, uh, to, to kind of get set up and calibrate. And now that it, it's calibrated, it heads right to the middle of the screen. You can see my mouse pointer there. Now, wherever I move my head, it's going to change that to mouse movement on the screen. So this is free. Cameramouse.org is where you go to download that software. What a lot of people ask is, okay, so you have the software. What do you do to click? Well, one of the things you can do to click is you can go here to settings. And within settings, there's an option for clicking. And it's just like the clicking within the keyboard for your um, 
your on-screen keyboard. It's a dwell click. But this becomes a left click, not just a, a click for um, uh, just a keyboard. Also, there's an option here for double clicking. So we'll choose both of those, and now we'll let it recalibrate, and we'll show you how we click using the camera mouse. So if I want to go to the start menu, I would go over there, and I'd hover for one second, and it would click that, and it would open it up. Now, if I wanted to double click on something, I would hold over the double click, and you can see it changes colors to let me know that I, it's double clicked, and I will go and I will hold over something else, and it's going to open that up for me. So that's the way that, and then we could use this with the on-screen keyboard to be able to control our, our mouse if we, we were unable to do so otherwise. So this is a really nice tool. It is free. Um, what I have found with this is that it's, uh, for a long time, they didn't use motion capture because uh, it, they worried about something going on behind the individual and in, uh, in affecting the motion. But since this pinpoints a certain point on your face, it does a pretty good job of zeroing in on that. Where I have found that this differs from maybe your commercial aspect is if you're trying to use it with somebody that has some spastic movements. Um, with a commercial Head, head controlled mouse, what you do is you put a reflective surface on your forehead so that when you move out of the camera range and come back in, it picks it up nearly automatically. With this, if I were to move around and come out of my camera range, you can see now that I, if you can see that little green box, it stayed in the center. So now it's a little bit off calibration. So if I had spastic movements, maybe this wouldn't be the best thing for me. But if I couldn't control my hands or arms real well, this is a pretty good um, this is a pretty good tool, and, and, and free is fantastic. So this is a really nice tool. Again, it's cameramouse.org is where you would pick that one up. Um, let's take a look at some other things here. Again, if you have questions while, while I'm doing this, feel free to just type them into the chat box, and we can address those as they come up. Um, I'm going to show you another free tool for typing now. This tool is called we're going to take a look at is called Dasher. Dasher, as we saw with the on-screen keyboard, it can be a little bit slow to point and click at each individual letter. The, the word prediction helps it out a little bit, helps out your speed a little bit, but um, it, it still is a pretty slow process for somebody that can't use a regular mouse. What Dasher is, this is a free download that kind of uh, makes you think outside the box when it comes to typing. It, um, it's a process that doesn't revolve around clicking. It's basically just guiding a cursor through a series of letters to select them and get them to enter up in this um, text box up here. So the way it works is you've got all your letters lined up on this side of the screen. When you, what you do is you click your button once. So you, you could do this with a switch. You could use a head mouse. You could use a joystick, anything that you might use for a mouse. And the letters start moving toward the middle of the screen. You aim your cursor at the letter that you want to get, that you want to select, and you get it to cross the crosshairs. When it crosses the crosshairs, it types up here. So, and, then it and then it displays another level of letters. So you don't have to click to choose each letter. You just have to guide it to cross the crosshairs. The other thing that happens here is you use this cursor. The farther out you move it, the faster the letters are going to move toward the middle. The closer you keep it to the middle, the slower they're going to move. So you can control your own speed. And if we look down here in the bottom left corner, there is a speed button that controls your maximum speed. I'm not exactly sure uh, what that correlates to, but uh, you can control your maximum speed with that. So I'm going to show you quickly how this works. If I click this button, these letters are going to start moving toward the middle of the screen. And I apologize. I don't know how well this is going to play via a webinar, but we will take a look and see how, uh, how fast and how quickly these uh, adjust. But if I, go to, if I go toward the H here, you'll see the H cross the crosshairs. So up in the top corner, the H typed up here. Now, you'll see that also it resets our letters here. So what we do now is now that we've selected H, we do not look at anything down here because these letters are all associated with, um, with I. We don't look at anything up here because these letters are associated with G. So it has reset our letters alphabetically by lowercase within our H box. Also, if we're looking for uppercase, we look for this bright yellow. That bright yellow area is where all our uppercase letters are.
if we ever want punctuation, we look for this little green area. That's where our punctuation is. But if we look at this, so even though we don't see every letter in the alphabet, they're all here. Um, what, what happens with this is, again, to make typing easier, it makes letters that might be more easily or might, would more likely follow what you chose to be the easiest ones to grab. So in this case, after choosing H, it's telling me I'm probably going to choose a vowel and most likely E. That made it the easiest thing to grab. Just because I don't see B, C, and D up here doesn't mean they're not there. I just have to go up and get to that little sliver and let it expand out. So we'll keep going. We'll go up there and take a look at that. So I'm going to zoom up here. We'll go through here. And there you see B, C, and D. So I'm just going to go backwards now because I don't want those. What I want is the E. I'm going to go through the E. And then look at this. It starts also guessing words or phrases, and it makes it easy to get those, pick up a whole word or phrase. So we have here, Henry, hello, my name. And anywhere we see those white boxes, those are spaces. So I'm going to go up here and go through hello, and then we see my name is, and then I'll go down to the yellow for the capitals. And, and check this out, too. When I first started using this, it also works to kind of learn how you type and to improve based on what you do. When I first started using this, um, the E was really big, the O was really big, and you couldn't see the I. You had to go between those two to let it expand out to see the I. I've done this demonstration enough times, though, that it knows it's learned that when I type hello my name is, Jim is probably following pretty closely. So it's made it really easy to grab my own name now here. So I could go through J-I-M period. It types my name up here. I can copy that and paste that into any document. This is a great tool for kids. It plays like a video game. The downside to this is it is a little bit difficult to learn at the front end. You absolutely have to have a good handle on alphabetic order to be able to use it. You have to be a pretty good speller to be able to use it as well. It's like riding a bike. It takes a lot of frustration on the early end, but once you get it, you can get going pretty quickly using it. Um, it but I guess that's the way with a lot of assistive technology, too. But this one in particular, again, kids like it because it plays like a video game, but, um, but it takes a lot of work. Now, I will show you this. Let's say my name wasn't Jim. Let's say it was Joe and I made a mistake here. I can take my cursor and go the other way and remove letters. So if I click and go the other way, letters start coming off, go down here, there's the O, there's the E. I'll look for my green following the E. There's the green. So now within this, I have to look for a period. There's the period. I'll click on that. I type, hello, my name is Joe. I can copy and paste that as well. So again, this is a free tool. These also have, they also have free apps for the iPhone, Android, uh, iPad using this. And with those, you can navigate through the letters by tilting your device in the direction that you want to go. But this, again, a great free tool for somebody that might struggle with accessing uh, or with typing or might want to increase their typing speed and they can't use a regular keyboard. Okay, the next group of tools that I want to show you are going to be, um, are going to be some, uh, some reading tools, some reading tools that allow us to uh, to access text for free. I mean, that's one of the biggest areas of assistive technology right now. Because when we talk about disabilities, and we talk about high incidence disabilities, and the biggest area where we can affect change for folks, typically it's with people that have difficulty accessing printed text. And there's lots of different reasons you might have difficulty accessing printed text. If you can't turn the pages of a book, if you can't see the text, if you have a learning disability, maybe learning English as a second language, maybe you just prefer to listen to text. There's lots of different ways to, to uh, or lots of different reasons you might need to read text. And so if we can get something out of the computer and out of a textbook, all of a sudden that becomes much more accessible to folks with disabilities. And we've seen recently a lot more tools developed for the computer for free to be able to have things read out loud. I'm going to show you a few of them here right now. Um, the first one I want to show you is a tool called Read Please. Read Please is right here. It's a tool that what, what we do is we would have text where we'd have to copy and paste. We, we have, with this, I guess, what we have to do is we have, to, we have this, uh, this interface where it has instructions for us in here. We'll delete those. Then what it wants us to do is copy and paste text. So I've got an internet article up here that maybe I'd want to read. Um, we'll see how Tiger Woods is doing here in the golf tournament today. 
let's say we want to read this part of it. I'm going to copy this text and I'm going to open up Read Please and I will paste it into Read Please. So there's my text. Now if I go to the beginning and hit play, and thrust in the pockets of his rain pants, which walked off cherry pines in the chill of twilight with a six shot leaf and only eleven more holes standing in the way of we can hear we can we can hear it read out loud and we can see it highlight. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I'm hoping everybody can hear that okay. We'll make sure this is maxed out uh, to our highest level. But so what we have with this is we've got a tool where it reads out loud and highlights so the user can follow along. That's very nice. Downside of this, the voice isn't very good. And really, all we can do is have it read. We have a little bit of control with our speed. We have this slider bar here where we can speed it up a little bit, slow it down a little bit. We also can control the size of our font. So if we've got somebody that uh, needs, needs this text bigger to see it, this sliding bar to increase the size of the font is nice. Here we can change voices. You see a, a picture of a woman there. If we change the voice, there's a male voice. There's another male voice, and there's another female voice. None of them are very good. We hit play again. Here's an example. And thrust in the pockets of his rain pants. So I mean, the downside to this is there's the voice isn't great, and you have to, you have an extra step of copying and pasting to get into it to use it. Those are that's that's the big downside. But it is free. So if you want a tool for a student to be able to use to try reading. Go ahead and give this a shot. Um, some students just the voice is just too bad for them; they won't even bother listening to it. But it's pretty easy to manipulate, and it's free. It's a it's a nice tool in that respect. I'm gonna kind of step it up a notch throughout the rest of this to show you maybe what the next level up might be. And the next one I want to show you is a tool called Natural Reader. Natural Reader is another free tool. Um, this one can be a little bit confusing, though. Uh, I guess there is an upgrade. We're not going to upgrade that. One of, that's another thing you got to be aware of with a lot of this free stuff. There's a lot of upgrades. There's constantly, you've almost got to be on top of it all the time. That um, you have to be willing to make sure you're upgrading and, and making and staying with uh, any upgrade that might occur uh, to make sure it's working well. So the same thing run, happens for this one. With, with Natural Reader, the, there's two ways to use it. The first way, you open up this interface. You would copy your text from somewhere else and paste it in. So again, there's kind of our downside to that. You would have to copy and paste. Um, once you've copied and pasted, you can put your cursor where you want to start. You hit play. And thrusting the pockets of his rain pants, Woods walked off. Tory pines in the Again, it's going to highlight. This time we get a little bit extra highlighting. It highlights the background sentence as well as each word as it goes through and reads it. So um, it helps to make helps it stand out where it is in the reading. It reads the sentence. It highlights as it reads. That is really nice. Um, again, we don't have much in terms of voice options. If I hit stop here, we can go down to the bottom left corner. You'll see Microsoft Anna. Well, this is not very. This is not actually. Uh, a very good representation of the voices that you have. Um, this actually has gone in and chosen every voice that I have on my um, on my computer. And since I have some pretty high-end text readers, it's choosing some of those voices. So the voices are closer to what we heard with uh, Read Please. And you can see here, this kind of tries to run this sales pitch. As you're reading, it pops up this, do you want to try better voices? And we could add, we could purchase voices and add them to this. Um, we have an option for changing speed here as well. A downside to this as well is they do want you to upgrade to a, a, a purchase version. And so they'll put things in here like this MP3 where it tells us basically that we could create an MP3 of this text if we wanted to. But if I hit this, what it's going to tell us is we have to upgrade. So we can't get that in the, um, in the free version. That's only available in the paid version. Another way that we can use this is there's an option down here for the floating bar. If we choose floating bar, this is what we get for our natural reader. And then say we go into that same, that same um, article and we want to start reading at that same point. If I hit play, now it's going to read while we, it's going to do what we wanted, it, what we had before, and I'll pause it, where it reads and highlights. But we can actually now see what we're reading here while it's reading it here. So we don't have to just be in that. Um, we don't just have to be 
in this version of natural reader where you're uh, where you're sitting on where you're not seeing the the um, the piece you're reading. We could do the floating bar, but again, with the floating bar, it's just going to be it's going to be a lot smaller. It's going to sit over here. The voices aren't great, but we do have that capability to have it read and and go from there. While we're in this article, I'm going to show you something else here. One of the issues that a lot of individuals have is, so they want to go read something on the internet. Take a look at what's going on here. Here's our text. It's pretty small. And it's right in the middle. But what do we have all around that? We've got a picture over here. We've got all these uh, social media components over here of people liking it and tweeting it and pinning it and all kinds of stuff over there. Then we've got ads over here, videos over here. If we scroll down, we see we've got more links, more videos, more ads. This can be really confusing, not just that for people in general, but especially for folks with disabilities. And we start talking to the ADHD. I mean, this is just a this is a a, a link that is really going to cause some issues for somebody there. So there is a tool that you can use, and I'm going to go to to limit that. I'm going to go and show you the website. It's readability.com. And if we go to readability.com, what this does is if you sign up, it is free. You can get an add-on, and an add-on is going to look like this little book on your uh, browser. I believe it, it used to really only work for Firefox. I believe it works for everything now. But with that Read Now little button on your toolbar, if you click on that, it is going to take your web page and it's going to convert it and it's going to remove all that extra garbage. So we can see now that same article that we just read, we were just looking at that had ads and links and all, other, all kinds of other things there. It keeps our main picture, but it removes all the ads from the side, removes all these ads from the other side. And what we've got now is just the main text of our article. We can scroll all the way to the bottom with this. And we get a little bit, of, a little ad at the bottom for re, uh, readability, but none of those ads, none of those, um, none of those uh, links in there. I believe Safari has this built in too. If you look on your uh, phone or your iPad and you go to a website and it says there's a little, there should be a little button up there that says Reader, which does pretty much the same thing. It wipes out all this stuff on the side. We can save it for later if we wanted to read it later. But, uh, and then if we wanted to go back, we hit this back button and it takes us back to that main page. So I'm just going to convert this again. This is, again, this is what we're dealing with um, before we hit readability. Lots of stuff in there, lots of stuff distracting from our text. We hit readability, it just takes a second to convert and we get just the main text of that to stand out. So that's a really nice free tool for accessing our um, for accessing the text and making things a little bit less confusing for those kids that might have disabilities. I want to show you now what I consider to be probably well, one of the better reading tools out here. And that reading tool is something called Nook Study. Nook Study kind of flies under the radar in the disability world because it wasn't really designed for folks with disabilities, but it has some great components to this that can really make accessing text and reading it a little bit easier. Nook study, most of you are probably familiar with the idea of a Nook. A Nook is, um, it was an e-reader for Barnes & Noble that's kind of transformed even more into a tablet than just an e-reader. But Barnes & Noble, with Nook study is something completely separate from a Nook itself. It's a, it's a download for, a, a software download for a PC or a Mac. Um, that basically was created, and I'll open it up here, it was created by Barnes & Noble to try and help them grab a bigger piece of the um, online, of the digital textbook arena. When they were looking around at, at trying to increase their market share in digital textbooks, they found that you know, a lot of people weren't necessarily buying them because what they wanted was they wanted to be able to do what you could do in a textbook, open it up, highlight, take notes in it, do all that kind of stuff. You couldn't do that in your standard digital textbook that you might buy from Barnes & Noble. So Barnes & Noble created this thing called Nook Study, which allows us to have access to all Barnes & Noble books. We can buy a Barnes & Noble book, bring it directly into here, and then we can do a lot of those things within Nook Study. So this is a free download, and we could download here some free books that they have in here. I'm just going to open up this Dracula book, and we can kind of show you 
some of the things that we can do within this. So we would buy a book through Barnes and Noble, and then we could sit here and we could we could take a look at this, and, and maybe we find something that we want to highlight. We can highlight the text on our screen, and when we let go, we get all kinds of neat options here. We have an option for applying markup. So if this is something we want to highlight. In fact, let's grab this whole uh, this whole part of the sentence here. We'll highlight to the end. We'll let go and we can hit apply markup and now we can highlight it. We can choose our color. We could underline it and choose our color. We could asterisk it, choose our color. We could add a question mark if we want. So we'll just highlight this and then we'll come down here and say, you know, I had a question about this part. We could add a question mark here. Um, you know, we could put an asterisk in here if we wanted to as well. So we've got all these different components to, to, um, to working with this. Now, where does folks with disabilities come into play? Let's say we had somebody with a disability that wanted to read this. We highlight our text from the beginning here. And take a look at this. If we go down to the bottom, we have two options here. Speak from here or speak selection. Speak selection is going to allow us to just read the piece that we've selected. But if we choose speak from here, Abraham Stover was born in Dublin on November it's going to start reading and highlighting as it reads. And it's, it's going to go until we tell it to stop. Theater manager and writer. So as soon as we highlight something else, it's going to stop. But that's a really neat component here. That's something now we've got the capability to purchase any book, any textbook through Barnes and Noble, open it up in here, and have it spoken out loud. Um, there is something that you do have, you have to do to be able to make sure that that works. And I'll show you that in a second. But I want to point out a couple other things here. We also have the capability, we could choose one piece here. We could choose a, a word, highlight a word. We could add a note to this if we wanted to. So not only can we highlight, but we could add a note. Within the note, um, we, could write, you know, we could write something in that note. and then save it. And what you'll see is we get a little green note here connected to that word. So when we, when we tap that note, it's going to, or we just hover over that note, it's going to show us um, what we've typed into the, our notes page there. We also have an option, this is pretty cool, um, where we can highlight text. So we highlight Great Britain, let go, and we have the option to look it up. And we can look it up within the book on Google on Wikipedia, Dictionary, Wolfram, or YouTube. So this really makes this text uh, come alive. It, it allows us to use other sources at hand to learn more about that piece that we highlight. Um, so that's another neat piece to this. Where I'm really concerned though again is in the, in, the, in the accessibility angle. So again, if we wanted to have this read text out loud, we could highlight text. Okay, let's, grab, um, let's grab a sentence here, just one short sentence. Highlight a sentence and let go, and then go and hit Speak Selection. During his seven years of civil service, Stoker cultivated his nascent literary career. And it's going to read that out loud to us. A little bit better voice than some of the old free ones, but uh, not great, but a little bit better. But again, it is free. Now if we go back up here and we hit Library, I just want to show you in Settings. When you first use this, you have to go into Settings, and you have to go into the Accessibility tab. And under the Accessibility tab, you will see Enable Text-to-Speech. You have to click that or it won't allow you to read. So you have to click Enable Text-to-Speech first. Now, one more neat piece here. So we talked about how you can, pull, you can buy books off Barnes & Noble. If you have a PDF, you can also bring that in. So if you have text in a PDF, if you go here and you hit Add Item and Import File, it's going to ask you to find or it's going to show you, it's going to give you access to your computer. You can grab any file on that computer, choose it, and it'll open it up and add it to your library. So here's a PDF that I have. I can open this up. I can highlight the first word, let go, and hit speak from here. Handbook of research on human cognition. And it's going to go through and read that. Design. Accessibility. So and this is a really, so that, that opens up all kinds of doors now. Anything that we can get in, into an accessible PDF, so PDF where we could search the text, we've got access to having that text read out loud for free 
and we can also edit and we can also add things to it and we could add notes, we could highlight lots of different things within that all through this free Nook study tool. You, all you need, the user would download Nook study, they have to create a Barnes and Noble account. You don't have to link it to a credit card. If you want to buy books through Barnes and Noble, you do. But otherwise, you don't have to link it to a credit card, and that can be a, a free, uh, it's really a nice free text reading tool. Does anybody have any questions to this point? I'm going to close that down. It doesn't look like we have any questions, so I'm going to just, I'm going to continue to show you things. Another neat tool that we just started discovering recently is uh, some tools built into Google Chrome. Now, Google Chrome is just another web browser if you're not using it yet. But what it does, with Google Chrome, you've got access to lots of cool different things. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome here. And then what you can do is there's actually a tool, uh, Read and Write Gold. Uh, I don't know if any of you have heard of that before. Read and Write Gold is a, is a tool, uh, a high-end text reading tool. It typically costs about $650. It, it does a great job reading text out loud to the individual. They have within Google Chrome an extension that you can get that, um, that adds Read and Write Gold's reading component free into this web browser for Google Documents. So if you haven't used Google Documents yet, what Google Documents basically are are a way to write something into a, into a Google into a document and have it saved in the cloud so that you can then go and, and access it anywhere you'd like. Um, you can find that here once you open Chrome through Google Drive. I'm going to click on Google Drive, and it's going to open up my Google Drive. So these are all the documents I have shared on Google Document or I've saved on Google Document. Now, if I go and open one of these documents, I'm going to open up this app resources document. Now I'm going to have access to Read and Write Gold. You don't just get Read and Write Gold by using Google Docs. What I would do is go to Google search and I type in read and write gold. You can see there, there the second option that pops up is for Google Docs. If you click on that, you get a link to the Chrome Web Store. If you click on this, it takes you and shows you the read and write gold element and says add to Chrome. You click add to Chrome, it is free right now, so you can just have it added. So now we have our text in this Google document. And you can see a tab here that says read and write. If I click on that tab, look at this. What I get are options for reading, for highlighting and collecting highlights, um, and for looking up words in the dictionary. And that's all free. So again, if I go to the beginning here and I click on that, I want to start there and I hit play. Voice over. Voice over is built into the operating system of the iDevice. When turned on, it will read text out loud. So I'm going to get this text reading and highlighting, that dual highlighting again where the sentence is highlighted and each word is highlighted as it goes through. That's a really nice component here because I can have any document that I have or anything that I've written in Google Documents, I can have read back out loud to me. Now, it also has a dictionary built in. So let's say I don't know the word built. I'm going to put my cursor right in front of it. I'll come over here and hit dictionary. And it's going to show me built. And it's going to show me um, the definition of that word. Now I believe, let's try this. If I click in front of that, or just highlight it, it's going to read that out loud to me. I'll highlight it and hit play. Oop, nope, I guess it's not going to read within. Oh, now it's reading in both. I guess it's just, uh, I guess all you have to do is highlight and click within that, and it'll read that out loud. So it does read that out loud. Now for those who have students that like highlighting and, 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 and want to make their own study guide, if we take and we highlight a sentence, and we go up here within our Google Docs and hit change the text background color, We'll just uh, we'll change it to red, and then I go here and hit collect highlights. It's going to go and it's going to pull out what I've highlighted and allow me to kind of create my own study guide just by those different highlights there. So I'm going to go back here quick and uh, we'll change that back real quick. So I have several people on here that uh, use that Google Doc, so we'll change that back to none. 
I'll change that later. Never mind. Um, so, so we can have again with this. This is really nice because we can have any any document read back, or any document that's in Google Docs read back out loud. So now, what's cool here is we can also take and scan in virtually any document that we have on our computer through Google uh, Documents, get it in here, and then have it read back out loud. We do that through the settings. So once you're within Google Drive, you go into the settings, and you look at upload settings here. You want to check all of these. Convert uploaded files to Google Docs format. Convert text from an uploaded PDF and image file. And what this allows you to do is we can take text in any format on the computer, and we can turn it into something that can be read. So if we have a PDF that's been scanned in, and typically it doesn't recognize this text, we can't search that text, we could scan it into here and make that text eligible to be read. We could also take a picture with a camera, with our phone, with our iPad of text, bring that into the computer, and then through this, convert it to have that read out loud. So if we have a textbook that's inaccessible to a student, we could sit there, take a few pictures of that text, load those pictures onto the computer, and then convert them via Google Drive. So once we have these, these pieces set, I'm going to go and I'm going to open up, I'm going to, first before we, I do this, I'm going to open this PDF that I'm going to show you um, just on my computer. So the PDF I'm going to work with is this PDF called the library example that I have here. So the reason I show this a lot is this tool, this PDF has been scanned in as an image. We click on here, it's going to try, it, it, it doesn't recognize words individually. And I can show you that by going and hitting edit and find and searching for the word toward because I see that right on the page. When I click find it, it tells me here it, it can't find it. And that's because it recognizes this as an image. So this PDF is not going to be read with text readers. So keeping that in mind, I go back into my Google Chrome. You can only, in my Google Drive here, in Google Chrome, and I look at this button here. This is the Upload button. If I click on that, and I go and hit Files, I'm going to go find that library example. So now it asks me, because I changed those settings with uploading, do I want to convert this to Google Docs format, and do I want to convert the text from the PDF and the image, and the image files to Google Documents. And when I say I want to do that, it makes that text um, workable for me. So I'm going to hit Start Upload now. And you're going to see over here, it's telling me it's uploading. Now it says Finishing. And when it's done, so it's still working on converting it. It shouldn't take too long. When it's done, I'm going to go find it in my list here. And I'm going to open it up, and you're going to see then that we can use that same Read and Write Goal that we were using before to read that out loud. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> All right, it's still working on finishing. Now the upload is complete, and it says it's converted as well. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go search in my list here for a library example. There it is. And now when I open it up, here is my library example. I'm going to scroll down. We'll scroll down to that first page that we looked at before. OK, so here's there's our first page. So the downside here, we still can't do anything with this first page. You'll see it when we click on it, it highlights the whole page. That still is an image. But what it's done is it gives us the very next page. It took all that text and it converted it to uh, text that we can read. So now we can click here. We can go back to our Read and Write tab, and we can hit Play. Tornade participatory framework for applied ethics. And it's going to read that same stuff that we saw up here. It's going to read that same stuff that we saw right here that we couldn't read in another format. We can access that and have it read out loud. Now, each page through here, so we might want to go through and delete some of these if we were going to read it. But e what we'd have is we'd have the, pa the, the image of the page and then the text right after that. And then again, the image of the page and the text right after that. But I mean, this, 
if you've worked with Kurzweil, if you've worked with Read and Write Gold in the past, and you've worked with scanning in books, that's a huge process. Those were really expensive tools. They're great tools, but they're not necessarily right for everybody. Now with Google Documents, all you need is if you get the student their own Google account, you can download this Read and Write Gold extension for free, and any student can open up a Google Drive document, upload these documents, ha basically have a virtual scan done, and then have them read out loud. So this is really a nice free tool. And I would recommend if you're thinking about doing this, dive on getting this Read and Write extension pretty quickly. Because we just had a meeting with Read and Write folks not that long ago, and uh, apparently they may start charging for that in the future. They may not, but they may start charging for that in the future. And, uh, and you'd want to have it now while you have the opportunity to get that for free. Um, those are the reading tools that I wanted to show you guys today. I still have a few more free tools that I want to take a look at here. But does anybody have any questions about those tools um, that we've been looking at? If you do, feel free to type them in that chat box. And I will, uh, I will answer whatever you've got there. While you're doing that, or while you're thinking of questions, I'll give you time again at the end, too. I am going to go and open up a, a document that has some pretty poor spelling issues with it to show you another free tool. If you look across the top of my screen here, I have this thing that says Ginger it on here. Ginger is a free download that basically works as a contextual spell checker to, to change what you've written uh, if, you, if you spell things incorrectly or if you, um, if you spell something correctly but use it incorrectly in a sentence. Ginger is a free download, gingersoftware.com. When you download it there, what you'll see is as soon as you're running it, when you start typing something, if it thinks something is out of whack, it's going to highlight it in blue in your Word document. This will also work anywhere you're typing something. So it could be on the Internet. It could be in, in, in another type of document. Anywhere you type something, it's going to work. So like here, I spelled this word incorrectly. If I now go hover over it, you're going to see that it's going to give me that word used correctly in the sentence. So I spelled yesterday incorrectly up here. It shows me the correct spelling with the rest of the sentence. If I just click on that, it's going to change the sentence for me. I could do that again here. Here I spelled giraffes phonetically. I spelled lions incorrectly, elephants and tigers as well. And it shows me that sentence. And then all I have to do is click on, click on that sentence, and it changes the whole thing for me again. Again, down here, I took lots of pictures while I was there, spelled that all incorrectly. I can make that change just by clicking it. It doesn't always get everything right. Um, so summer is finally hers. That's not what I was going for. I was going for it just finally here. So if it gets a word incorrect, you can go and you can hit the X that pops up next to that word, and it's not going to change that word then if we select the whole thing. But what we do have to do is we will have to go in then and change that on our own. Now the downside to this, in the free version, it does not have a speech component that reads that stuff back to you. So that if you are a poor speller, if you are a phonetic speller, and you rely on um, listening to be able to change, to, to be able to see if what your changes are correct, um, it doesn't have that point. It used to have a purchase component that you could buy a reader. I think that is thus since changed. But this really is a nice spell checker for those that really struggle with spelling to be able to make changes to your document directly and to do it on a sentence basis as opposed to a per word basis. So Ginger is a great tool. Gingersoftware.com is where you pick that up for free. I'm going to show you just a couple more things here. A couple more free tools. These free tools are things um, our, our MP3 creators. That's where we're going to end today is by showing a couple MP3 creators. What these are, uh, so some students, they may just need the voice uh, of something. They may not want to be able to follow along and have it highlight while it reads. And there's two really good free converters out there that we can use to, um, to get text and put it into a document or into an MP3 format. The first one's called Vosme, V-O-Z-M-E dot com. With Vosme, it's, the thing that's nice about it is a very simple interface. This is it. We can choose English, Spanish, or there's other languages. 
we take text, so we still have that piece from that Sports Illustrated article. We can paste it into this document. We'll delete the bottom part of this. We'll paste it into this area. We can choose a male or female voice from that drop-down menu. And then we can hit Create MP3. It takes just a second to do that. And then it reads, and then we have it here where we can download it and put it onto our computer. Downsides to this, that voice is pretty rough. It's tough listening to that voice. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the, the, again, the positives are the interface is very simple, very easy to use. The voice is not good. It is a downside to have to copy and paste text into this. But it, it's simple to use. Now, another downside. Once I close this, it's gone. I would have to run that again to create the MP3 again. But right now, it's gone. There's nothing I can do about it. I'd have to run it again. So that could be a downside as well. But the interface is simple to use. The one that I really like better is a tool called Yakitome, Y-A-K-I-T-O-M-E.com. And if we go to Yakitome.com, we can create a sign-in. If we create a sign-in, it is free. And within this sign-in, what happens then is when we upload or we create an MP3, it's going to save that for us. So we don't lose it every time we close the website down. We can go into our library, pull that out, and listen to it any time. What's nice here is we do have the option to copy and paste text in. Or you see File. If we choose File, we can go and choose any file, a PDF file, a TXT file, or a DOC file. We find that file. We hit Run Text to Speech, and it's going to create an MP3 file for us in, in just a matter of a couple of minutes, really. I mean, this is a, probably a 20-page PDF that I just put in there, and it's not going to take too long to start to begin creating. There's, a, there's our MP3 that it's, it's converting. So it's, uh, it says here it's converting the text to speech. It's, it's ripped kind of the text out of that PDF for us. And now if we hit Play, well, we should be able to hear some of this. I guess it's still working. Oops, that was the. Yeah, get to me. Where is the web? There we go. Hi, I'm Google for Search on Human Cognition and Assist of Technology Design. Accessibility and transdisciplinary. So that actually gives us a pretty good voice. It, it gives us these in incremental chunks so that we don't have to wait for the whole thing to, to convert to listen to it. It gives us a pretty good voice. It allows us to do an entire document at the same time. Um, really, overall, this is a really nice tool for being able to. Um, to create MP3s for free from just about anything. So if you have students that like just hearing the text, um, if you have students that maybe want to listen to something on the bus, maybe in a car ride, maybe while they're working out, this would be a great way to, to give them access to that MP3 that they could then load onto an iPod and, and use from there. Um, I think that is just about it. I mean, we're pushing pushing our hour here that we had set aside for this webinar. I hope what I've been able to do, I'm going to stop sharing my desktop briefly. Uh, I hope what I've been able to do is show you some free tools that might really be um, might really be beneficial in the classroom or in your job or wherever you happen to be uh, working. I'd be glad to answer any questions I have uh, you have for, for those right now. Um, if you joined late in the session and you missed anything, this session will be archived on our website, so you can go back and take a look at it. It should be up there by tomorrow uh, to take a look at, at what we've gone through and talked about. But does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask? I mean, feel free to just type them into that chat box if you do. Um, again, while you're while we're deciding if you if you've got any or not, I just want to. I tell you, I hope this was a good introduction to some free tools. I would be glad to go further in depth on anything with you on a more individual basis, or if you had any questions about any of the things that we talked about here today, um, you can you can email me at james dash s t a c h o w i a k at uiowa dot edu, or you can um, call me at three one nine three three five. 5280, and I'd be glad to go over any of those things with you. And I'd also invite you, uh, if you're joining us here, I, I'd like to invite you uh, to join us every Wednesday. We do a app, or every Tuesday now, I'm sorry, we do an app webinar where we 
um, where we walk through about 10 to 15, or 15 to 20 minutes. We walk through an app that might be helpful for assistive technology uh, as, a, as an assistive technology app. And we will continue to do these monthly webinars. And uh, you can find everything on our website, education.uiowa.edu slash iCater. And uh, go to the webinars tab. The webinar we'll be doing tomorrow, we'll be doing a pre-recorded webinar on a tool called Zite for the iPad. So if anybody, if nobody has questions, um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll leave it running for just a couple more minutes to see if you have questions. But I'm pretty much done at this point, and uh, would now just welcome any questions you have. But if you don't, thanks for coming today, and I, and I hope you found this useful. <laughs>